Hello, I am Bobby Slick or Robert, and my research was on the accuracy of artificial intelligence or AI chatbots in telemedicine. So artificial intelligence chatbots that I looked at kind of like showed patient to doctor advancements in these in the COVID-19 like 2020 era. So patients being stuck at home and not being able to go to these hospitals because of the massive amount of COVID-19 and other like virus, like in other like implications in the medical field that limited patient to doctor face-to-face -face advancements. And so chatbots were, AI chatbots were kind of like what I saw as a solution to this gap between patients and the doctors. The purpose of this research was to discover whether AI chatbots are effective in giving a patient an idea of what medical condition he or she might have before consulting a medical professional. So basically they would not get the false, they would get the information from the chatbot and they would take that information to an actual medical professional, whether it be a, a Zoom call or face-to-face -face if they are given the option. The hypothesis with this experiment was that of the four AI chatbots that were used, Symptom8, ADA, Isabel Symptom Checker, and K-Health, K-Health would be the most accurate out of the four chatbots. So this is my experimental design diagram. The independent variable was the type of chatbot I used, and I used 30 different symptoms that were provided by a medical professional. And I inputted these 30 different symptoms into each of the chatbot itself, each of the chatbots themselves, and I just statistically analyzed each of the results. Materials that were used, I used a Mac computer, a Chromebook, and each of the chatbots, as well as mayoclinic.org to give a further explanation of each of the medical symptoms that I'll be inputting into these chatbots. So first, when I, this is, some, this is an example of the Symptomate chatbot, and I would input basic information such as like height, weight, age, and gender to get a basic start for the actual symptoms. And then I added the symptom to the chatbot itself, which was provided by a medical professional. And the chatbot would give me one of the fo would follow up would give me follow up questions where I would be able to answer based on the symptoms that I was inputting into the chatbot. And after each of these symptoms, after the symptoms were inputted into the chatbot and it gave me an answer, I was able to receive directions from the chatbot itself of what to do with this information and whether or not you need to see a medical professional immediately or just the fact that you need to like it suggests you whether or not to see a medical professional based on how severe it thinks your symptoms are here's an example of one of the symptoms i used i used a myocardial infraction or like a heart attack is what it's normally known as is i use the symptoms of like chest pain um radiating into like the neck as well as like the lower arm lower arms and left arm, as well as shortness of breath and diaphoresis. So this is a descriptive statistics of all of this, like the chatbots that I use. And as you can see, Isabel's symptom checker had the highest accuracy out of all the chatbots. Here's a graphical representation of each of the chatbots compared against each other. And I did a one-way ANOVA test to statistically analyze the variant, the statistically analyze how significant the data that I found in this research was. And I thought with a p-value of 0.298, which is greater than the alpha value of 0.05, my data was ruled to be non was I, I was unable to reject the null hypothesis. So Isabel's symptom checker was the most accurate out of the four chatbots. And the overall accuracy compared between all of the chatbots was around 77.5% correct that medical diagnosis. Also, I the two of the Chatbots that I used were computer-based, and two of the other two of the chatbots that I used were phone app-based. And I found that the phone-based apps were more consistent. So the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, the I was unable to prove that the, the chatbots were statistically different from each other. And Isabel Symptom Checker also had the most variations for diagnosis for a set of symptoms. So as you can see, this is. The, all of the diagnoses that the, it, the Isabel symptom checker actually gave me. And I, I was able to determine that if the uh, diagnosis was on that list, it was a correct answer. So even though it was gave me the correct answer, there was a wider range of answers that it gave me, which just proves that you need to actually see a medical professional before you actually diagnose yourself.
it's, just, it's not <laughs> so it's just saying that you shouldn't rely based off rely only on the chatbot you should take this information and get an actual diagnosis by a doctor and the accuracy also i found was based off of the user interface so when i inputted the actual symptoms into the chatbot sometimes when i was like it would i would continually kind of answer the same thing over and over again to get like a it would ask me the same thing and confirm it so that way they would give me a accurate diagnosis so basically some major 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 sources of uncertainty for this research were using the wrong symptoms that um kind of just said like some symptoms i may have inputted wrong as well as unreliable sources such as maybe wikipedia but i don't think i use those as much and maybe not and maybe in future research i could input more than 30 symptoms or 30 diagnoses to find the overall better accuracy of the chatbots that's about it